Hi folks, in this video I'm going to use these two telescopes to capture the moon, the planets, and if we're really lucky, the blood moon. Let's go! We'll start tonight by capturing the moon as it approaches its full phase. Then we'll move on to Saturn, which is close to its opposition. That's the point where it's nearest to Earth in its orbit around the Sun. I'll try to capture the majestic rings, though in 2025 they're tilted almost edge on. After that, I'll wait until the early morning to capture Jupiter and Venus as they rise in the early morning sky just before the Sun comes up. And if everything goes well, I'll finish with the full lunar eclipse visible low on the horizon here in the Netherlands, though I'll have to be quick before the Earth's shadow starts to move away again. The Seastar S50 is an affordable, lightweight, smart telescope that fits in a backpack, featuring a 50mm aperture and a 250mm focal length apochromatic refractor and a 2 megapixel Sony IMX462 color camera. In contrast, I'll be using my far more expensive Slash Pro Match HD 8 inch with a 200mm aperture and a 2000mm focal length, paired with the 26 megapixel ASI 2600 Mono Pro for the moon, and for the planets, I'll switch to my 6 megapixel pixel ASI 678 color camera. Let me know if you think the big price difference is really worth it. So I'm pretty confident both telescopes can capture the moon pretty well. But when it comes to planetary imaging, it's all about the aperture. And the Edge HD has an aperture that is four times bigger than the Seastar S50. People keep on asking me if these affordable smart telescopes are any good for planets. Well, aperture and focal length make all the difference here. My Edge HD has a 200mm aperture and is 4 times larger than the Seastar's 50mm aperture. That means 16 times more light gathering power, giving me brighter photos and videos at shorter exposures, so I can push the frame rate higher and catch those fleeting moments of good astronomical seeing. Focal length matters too as it relates to magnification. The Seastar has just 250mm while the Edge HD reaches 2000mm. That's 8 times longer, which means 8 times more magnification when using the same camera. You need that high magnification because planets are very small in the night sky. Just look at this old video I took in 2023 on a cloudy day when Venus went behind the moon. Just look at how small it is. So over the past couple of years I've become quite accustomed to using the ASI Air Plus to control my astrophotography rig. But there's one particular weakness and that is the video capture is not so good on the ASI Air. So for this video I'm reverting back to my mini PC to actually capture the moon and the planets using SharpCap. Let's hope I still know how that works. Planetary imaging is all about beating the atmosphere, which is what we call astronomical seeing. The air above us is constantly shifting, which makes planets blur and wobble. The trick is to capture as many frames per second as possible, so you can later stack only the sharp ones when the air briefly steadies. The more frames you record, the more chances you have to freeze those tiny moments of clarity. That's why I'm using SharpCap on a mini PC or laptop, which can capture at very high frame rates. The ASI Air Plus, on the other hand, tops out at around 30 frames per second. And yes, the Seastar S50 is also limited to about 30 FPS. All right, folks, as you can see, the weather is a little bit sketchy. So let's hope for one or two hours of clear skies tonight so I can capture the moon and the planets. Let's see what happens. All right, folks, so the show has started. The moon is out. It's almost nine o'clock. So I will first point my Seastar S50 towards the moon and then the Edge HD 8 inch. Let's see what we can photograph tonight. While the camera with the telephoto lens had no trouble capturing this video of the moon, the ZWO Seastar S50 struggled to find it in the early evening sky. Come on, little Seastar S50. I can't find the moon. What's happening? Normally the sea star is much quicker, but this time it took nearly 10 minutes before it's finally locked onto the moon. Come on. Fenty Mali. Ah! Finally here it is. Let me show you. 
The moon was about 95% lit, glowing yellow as it hung low in the evening sky, and I used the Seastar S50 to record two 90 second videos, one in normal mode and one in AVI RAW, and I stacked the best 50% of the frames in Auto Stacker to create this final picture. The Seastar S50 still amazes me as it is easily one of the best budget smart telescopes for capturing the full moon. But now, it's time for the big boy. Great, so let's now point the Edge HD to the moon. After slewing to the moon, I dialed in the focus on the Edge HD while watching the shaft gap feed from my mini PC on my laptop. Alright, so let me do a little old fashioned focusing here. And we are in focus, let me show you. So here's one of the videos I captured in SharpCap with the ASI 2600 Mono Pro. I stacked the best 50% of the frames and added a bit of sharpening, resulting in this final moon image. When we do a side-by-side -side comparison, the Edge HD shows slightly more detail than the budget-friendly Seastar S50. But the difference is subtle, not super dramatic. I added the dew cap to fight the fog and switched on the dew heater ring on the Edge HD 8 inch. Then I swapped the APS-C sized ASI 2600 Mono Pro camera for the ASI 678MC which is a 6 megapixel planetary camera with smaller pixels that's perfect for close-up shots of the planets. I focused on Copernicus Crater first, which is one of my favorite lunar spots and famous for its dramatic terraced walls and bright rays that stretch over 800 kilometers. And then, this happened. I nearly had a heart attack. So, a couple of months ago, SharpCap added the ability to slew to objects and plate solve your position. I slewed to Saturn, and then everything went horribly wrong. After putting the scope back in its home position again and trying Saturn, it finally behaved. After a bit of searching, the planet appeared in view, and I started recording. Relieved. I always start by overexposing Saturn in a wide field shot, because those tiny dots around it, those are Titan, Tethys and Rhea on the right, and Dione on the left. All actual moons of Saturn. So I dropped the region of interest and I shot 3 minute videos at 50 frames per second at 20 millisecond exposures and a gain of 200 which is short enough to avoid that dreaded rotational smear. So Saturn is almost at opposition right now in September 2025 and at the time of this recording it was 45 arc seconds across with its famous rings. Though majestic is a bit of a stretch right now because the rings are nearly edge on so they look a little bit more flat and faint. Next year will be more exciting to photograph Saturn but for now let's call this practice. A really cool feature I want to highlight in SharpCap is live stacking for planets. It grabs the best frames, it stacks them live and it gives you a sneak preview of what your final stacked and sharpened image might look like when you're going to manually process it in AutoStackit or Registex. It's super fun to play around with this mode. So here's one of my better results from that night. Still a bit blurry but hey, not bad for an Edge HD 8 inch under sea level skies in the Netherlands. And when I add the moons, it gets even better. So I put the S50 right next to my Edge HD and I aimed it also at Saturn. 
Okay, this is the part where some people might get mad at me, but please hear me out here. I get asked at least five times a week if affordable smart telescopes like the Seastar S30, the S50 or the Dwarf 3 are any good for planetary imaging. So aiming it at Saturn, what did I see? Well, a bright little dot. That's it. I lowered the exposure, I dropped the gain, I recorded a few videos, but with just 50mm of aperture and 250mm of focal length, the S50 simply can't show any detail. So a lot of folks also ask about the 4 times zoom. Well, that's digital zoom, not optical zoom. It just makes planets look bigger and blurrier. Zoom in all the way and you can actually count the number of pixels. Here's a stacked image and you can literally see that Saturn is about 12 pixels across. So what you need to remember is that planets are tiny and to see real detail you need big aperture and long focal length telescopes. Even my 8 inch 2000mm Edge HD is on the low end. The best planetary images come from 10 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch or even 16 inch aperture telescopes. Planetary imaging, aperture is king. But dragging a 16 inch telescope to my rooftop? Yeah, no thanks. Well, still kind of wanted though. Aperture fever is real. So I dragged myself out of bed at 4 a.m. in the morning to catch Jupiter and Venus rising in the free dawn sky. Let me show you what I got with both the Edge HD and the Sea Star S50. One really cool thing was that Jupiter's moon Io was just finishing a transit across the planet on the right side and I could also see Europa nearby. I captured Jupiter at 7 milliseconds exposure so with a gain of 200 at native f10 using the ASI678 color camera. I kept the videos to 1 minute each to avoid blur from Jupiter's vast rotation and then I played around with the live stacking feature in SharpCap again. This is one of the best tech pictures I got. You can see Io just finishing its transit across Jupiter and Europa hanging out a bit further to the right. I really love how this one turned out. So maybe I was a bit too hard on the Sea Star S50. I could see a hint of Saturn's rings and now I can see a glimpse of Jupiter's two biggest cloud bands. Sea Star Smart Telescopes, they are great for quick casual viewing and for anyone who does not want to fall into the bottomless money pit of astrophotography and for those who don't want to carry around a big heavy astrophotography rig. I almost got into trouble again zooming from Saturn to Venus in SharpCap, but I remembered last night's chaos and stopped just in time. I sent the mount back to its home position first and then slew to Venus. SharpCap still needs some work here, but I'm glad it finally has a new slew feature. Despite the clouds rolling in and Venus sitting low on the horizon, it was a nice surprise to see that Venus was about 85% illuminated. With the exposure and gain lowered, I even thought I saw a hint of cloud patterns on my Edge HD image. Though, maybe I was just imagining it. I ended up using different telescopes for the Blood Moon episode and even shot a quick low quality phone video to explain why. Should I include it? Well, why not? Let's roll the tape and afterward I will show you what I managed to capture from the part of the full lunar eclipse we got to see right here in the Netherlands. So here's the Edge HD, here's the Sea Star S50 and tonight is the Blood Moon. So what happened? Let me explain. I have actually two major challenges and let me explain outside here. So the first challenge is that as you can see it's still daytime and the moon will rise already fully eclipsed at 8 o'clock at night. So I need to find that blood moon right away close above the horizon in the sky and I decided to use the Dwarf 3 for that because the Dwarf 3 has this wide angle lens. So that makes it very easy to spot the moon low in the, uh, in the night sky and then hopefully I can capture a nice time-lapse video with the Dwarf 3. And the second challenge, let's go up here on my rooftop. So, yeah. <laughs> 
As you can see, I'm using an older apochromatic refractor and an older camera to capture the blood moon because it's, maybe you might notice it here now, it's, it's super windy here and actually the whole setup already uh, toppled somewhat, it fell. So I just don't want to risk, I don't want to risk my Edge HD and the 2600. So, Anyway, I hope I will be able to capture the, the blood moon and show you some nice pictures. Let's hope for the best. So I ended up live streaming the blood moon from my rooftop using the Dwarf 3 and my 18mm APO refractor and around 8.45 at night the rising blood moon finally came into view. The eclipse was nearly over by then but I still caught the last part as the earth's shadow slowly slid away from the moon again. Here's a quick compilation. Thanks for watching, clear skies, see you in the next video.